All right, so here's our agenda for today. Um, we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about the standards report. Um, we'll also talk about how to utilize skill builders for the additional support um, around like how to kick te that test anxiety to the curve. We'll leave some time for question and answer and then also a wrap up. So um, I know the time was a lot of for an hour. I like to give more time, but I won't hold you hostage if we don't need that entire time. Um, this here though is, is really just like practical tools as that how to take what you're currently doing and utilize assistance in that process and how to utilize the tools um, to support that work. So let's take a, let, well, first of all, before we go there, <laughs> This is what we'll cover today. When you leave, you'll be able to like, ooh, standards report. I know what I'm doing here. And then also just how to utilize the skill builder if you haven't used it or seen it or even known about it. Boom, you're learning something new today. And if you do utilize it, maybe learning how to utilize it in a, um, a different way as we connect it to the standards report as well. So um, before we get started, just would love to know what do you all currently um, or how do you use uh, standards-based data to drive your student learning in your practice right now? So if you want to share it in the chat or come off mute, what are some ways that you use standards-based data to drive student learning? This is Rich. I'm not sure uh, exactly what you're looking for here, but I mean, we everything we do, the curriculum that we use is standards based, and you know that's one thing I like about your skill builders is they're organized via standards, and so when we go look for something that I can use to complement the work that we're doing in the, uh, Eureka Math, I can and try and match the standards. So I mean, we use it. I mean, that's just the way we use it. Though. All the system and the curriculum is based on standards. Thanks, Rich. I'm happy you joined today. So Rich is a part of the teacher community on Facebook. And I always love that he always shares. So first of all, I appreciate that, Rich. Um, and honestly, like that's what I was looking for. Like some some people have uh, utilized like standards based data. Some people, they might not. And so just was wondering like what's current practices. Um, go ahead, Carrie. Yeah, I can just highlight uh, for Denise, she says like if her students don't necessarily get a concept, she doesn't necessarily go on. Um, and so like kind of looking at that standard for mastery level when it comes to her students. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, that was that was my practice in the classroom as well, because as we know, in math, everything's a building block. So if there's a component of the standard that students have don't actually grasp at that moment, then we know one, it's going to circle back. But also because it is a building block, needing students to be able to have that, that foundation to really have a deep understanding of what you're asking them to do. So thanks for sharing. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so what I want to do first is just share like where you can actually access the standards report. Um, just quick show of hands or like thumbs up or any emoji. Do you utilize the assessment standards report in your classroom right now? Okay, I see you. Rachel. A couple of thumbs up. Okay. But it's a fairly new like feature when it comes to assessments. So it's nice that we're diving into it. Yes, I definitely agree. Like when I was using it, I didn't have the standard support. So I was kind of like, excuse me, what's this thing here? I uh, would have loved to have it. I know. I remember when you like take those questions and you mark the standard yes. and you look at the data and you see the standard. And it just took a yes. little longer where it's like, oh yeah, oh. I think this does it now. It's like, oh. Old school, uh, okay, we're old school now. It's like old school assistance to use. <laughs> but so just to be able to like see if you haven't utilized standard report before, Rich, I saw your thumbs up. Thank you. Um, just want to show you where to access, where to access it, and then also just give you some quick like, here's what these different things mean. Um, so I'm gonna go to one of uh reports we already have under my assignment. Um, all of your assignments are there for you to be able to see and utilize. Um, and so as you view your report up here where he has, like, this is our normal, which you might normally look at, see or dive into. At the top where we have your problems, it says standards. Boom, bam, that's what we, that's where you're, you're looking at those things there. And the thing that I like the most that I really wish I had when I was using this is that um, it breaks down what standard you like, might be able to see within that problem. And then you can also see like the number of problems. So within your what within this section of um, like the problem set, what this is saying is that 
one of the problems that was assigned is connected to 7RPA 2A. And then you have one that was connected to 2B and one that was connected to 7G. Um, so, and then also you have that prereq there. So uh, a couple of things that I've done in my role as a school success manager, um, I get to support schools and leaders and teachers to go deeper development around um, what they're doing in their classrooms, around like math standards and expectations. Um, what I've been doing lately with a couple of my schools is really looking at like how to dive into the standards report and be intentional about developing students' um, abilities and needs based off of where they're scoring on specific standards. So if you teach, if you taught seventh grade, I know Carrie, I think Carrie, you did teach seventh grade, right? <laughs> yes. If you taught seventh grade, you know that ratios and proportion is major works for that standard. And so like, yes. as you get into, Rich, I hear you. Yes. <laughs> like, as you get into testing, it becomes that it's a notion of like, huh, how is Charmé or my class or how are my students doing within these standards? So it's not necessarily about the problems within the curriculum. It's more about like, where's the major work standards and how are they doing within their comprehension of that material? And how can I dive deeper to reinforce and support students needs there? I'm gonna pause because I've been using a lot of words. Carrie, did you have anything you want to say or add to that? No, I think that's great. Um, I'm just, just trying to monitor the chat and if any questions are coming in, I'll definitely voice it out loud. Perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so that that's the where you can find the standards report, pretty straightforward. And then I just want to dive back and do a little visual for you. Again, you can go to my assignments and then click on the reports tab. And then here's just a breakdown of what every little piece of that means. So again, in the standards report, obviously you can see what standard is represented there. Um, and then it also notes like the number of problems. I really like that part because some of our, um, like, you know, some of the curriculum is really heavy on certain standards. And then some like other lessons might have some reinforcement of other like supporting standards or like prereq standards. Um, so I like that it tells you like how many actual problems within um, that strand is in the, the assignment that you assigned. And then you also have like the student average across the problem, which is not new. It's just, it just looks in a different capacity. And then one thing that I just wanted to know and draw your attention to as you start to look at, or if you start to utilize the standards report a little bit more. So any of those like non-open response questions are either given a score of one or zero. Um, you'll see a one if it's answered correctly on that first attempt. So automatically one, correct. Um, you might also see a zero and uh, if they didn't, but something to know is like currently we don't have any um, like partial credit for scoring right now. So that, so again, you, if you see a one or a zero, that's what that represents. Yeah, for more like the auto scoring. So the partial credit, the only time it comes up in a standard report is for those open response questions um, that teachers then provide that um, score for. It's interesting with this because it's almost that standards report is very similar to um, true standards-based grading um, kind of idea where I don't, I was at a standards-based school and was like, all right, that one problem, it's like, they get one chance at it. Did they like, like, did they get it right? And you have like three or four problems based in that standard so that they have an overall average, but that one question, they just get that one chance on it. And that's kind of how our standards report works. So it's like a yeah. true kind of standard mastery measure. Yep. Thanks. Okay, so now how to really kick it to the curve, right? Um, this is a piece that I'm like, ooh, perfect, like hand-in-hand -hand compliments. So being able to utilize skill builders for additional support. So once you know, now you're on your, uh, you looked at your report and now you went to the standard section and you're saying like, here's those core uh, chunks of standards that were being addressed within your lesson or within um, a certain, or certain subset of things that you assigned, you can utilize the skill builder to actually uh, do some deeper dive with additional support. Um, before we jump into like showing you what it is, just want to do like a, a overview or, or a recap of what skill builders are, um, just in case you haven't utilized it or you do know about it. Um, so a couple of things of what are skill builders actually, they are like a large uh, set of problems. And I love that they are randomly assigned. However, they are directly connected and aligned to the Common Core standards. So essentially what this is saying is, um, I, I, as a teacher, want to assign some additional uh, racial and proportion questions connected to like 
RP2A, I can utilize, look at those specific standards and be able to assign them to students and it's random the type of question. So I know my students are getting additional practice with that standard mastery um, and, it's, and it's randomly as, as randomly assigned. One thing to also note is that it's mastery based. And when we say mastery, I just wanna stamp what that means from an assessment standpoint. When we're talking about mastery base here, it's that students are able to answer at least three questions in a row correctly. So that's what mastery base means for uh, within the skill builder platform. And just wanted to highlight and note that you it is limited to, to 10 questions per day. So if you're thinking about like a, assigning to a different to a student or to maybe if you want to do like a recap or a revamp or something, or maybe it's like a prereq work to prepare for standards, there is a 10 question limit per day. Some here's are like some practical like how and when to use skill builders. Um, if you're thinking about building fluency within the standard, so after a lesson, so maybe it's one of those where it's like you assign something, you want to see how students are doing, you can do that quick assess there. Um, remediation for students struggling within a standard. And so this is one of those ways where um, connecting that standards report to your skill builder, really being able to sit through and say like, I know that Charmé or my class is struggling on or needs additional practice within um, a specific strand. And so I can assign that to my classroom or to that specific student. Um, it's also extra practice to build confidence. The one thing I like is that uh, our skill builder problems go from grade two to 12. And so it doesn't necessarily just need to be for remediation. You could also utilize skill builders for acceleration. So if you have a student that's uh, thriving or working well, or, or you want to build some challenges or even prepare students for, you know, what the next chunk of standards that are coming up within a lesson, you could also assign it there. And I think another thing to note is that, again, since you can utilize whatever uh, standard is there, we know certain standards were covered at the beginning of a school year. So being able to circle back and to see like how are students doing within the other um, standards that they'll be held accountable to. And while for seventh grade, RP is the major work standard, there's still some EE there. You still have geometry. Um, you'll still have to do like those different uh types of problems. And so are students still feeling comfortable and confident with the network as well? Um, and then also for test prep or reviewing um, for like targeted high level standard work there. So that's when, or when you could utilize skill builders. So I like to touch things all the time. I want you to be able to see, play around with and experience um, a, a and try out a skill builder if you haven't before. If you have, then obviously you'll know what that looks like, but I still want you to be able to navigate and see that. Um, so in this case, um, just because I wasn't really sure what grades we will be dealing with, I want us to look at a uh, fifth grade and then numbers and operations, because we know fractions are a big deal for fifth grade. And uh, so if you log into your assessments account um, and go to skill builder, fifth grade, numbers and operations, and then adding one, click on the triple dots, and then I want you to try it out. I will demo this for you because I know I just used a whole bunch of words and you're probably like, what'd you just tell me to do? So <laughs> again, you go to, on your home screen, if you go to find and assign, and if you want to scroll down here to where it says skill builders, you can find whatever grade. Honestly, if you want to look at your grade, that's totally fine too. But you can do fifth grade, um, numbers and operations for fractions. And then just that first one, adding properties. And so the one thing I would say is click on these triple dots that are here and preview as a student. That way you're able to see what your students see, how it would show up for them. There's different like messages and things that pop up as well. So I'm gonna go quiet and I'll give you a couple of minutes to play around with that. I'll do a two minute timer. When it comes off, we'll come back in and uh, just be able to talk through some other things and wonders. Oh, I should have get my background music. Oh, dang it. I've, I've done quite a bit with the skill builders. I really love that preview uh, feature too, by the way. Um, because I, I do it I do it before the kids do it. So that's a feature that's really nice. Um, the, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. I like to see like, what are we getting into <laughs> before yeah. so that I'm able to answer any random questions or at least know like, oh, this might pop up. So I need to tell a kid to be able to click and play around with things. Yeah. My only my only concern, my only feedback is I, I like the fact that they have to get three in a row, 
But I tell my kids, if they're starting to feel confident, because what you said earlier was really spot on, if they start to feel confident and want more practice, I say, just do two good ones and then do a bad one <laughs> on purpose. And then I have them do extra practice. Uh, that's you know I like that technique though that's actually a good a good like oh here's how to work the system to get yep. more of those problems and just as a timer I know I've been talking I'm sorry got about 40 seconds and then we'll come back all right so that was two minutes if you need more time <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> I was kind of like oh I try to do an easier one um but I definitely want to talk about some like notice wonders things that you're like is this new did you like that thoughts um and feel free to come off me if you like um I'm not sure if you heard while uh while you were playing around, Rich did mention that he utilizes skill builders in um, his classroom. And so it is, a, if you get three right, then you're, then it's like three and done. So one of the ways to like work around that is if a student does get a problem wrong, they'll get, actually get additional questions to answer just to like verify and confirm that they actually um, understand that skill. So that, that's a little like how to work the system. Yeah. Were there any other like thoughts or like, oh, I like this or I'm like, mm, how, uh, notice or wonders that you'd like to share out uh, based off of walking through the experience? I mean, I'm, I'm using, I'm using, I'm using you some this week already. Um, it's a, it's actually a great tool and it's nice that it ties to the curriculum. And uh, I actually have, used it effectively for the kids and it's you know the kids build confidence they get in they try and do it and then purposely um i'll ask them to miss one or two and and then and then uh, continue but it's actually worked really well and it's a great compliment in fact i used it when i needed a substitute this week um because i had another task and so your lesson is skill builders and that's what the kids came in and did it worked out really well they had already had the lesson so they were able to use the skill builders to as an additional practice for the lesson that was taught the day before. Very nice. Do you, and this is just a Charmaine wondering, do you utilize it? I know there's different ways you can use it. Um, do you generally use it as like extra practice or um, are there any other ways that you've utilized uh, skill builders, Rich? Primarily right now, well, one extra practice, but more importantly, I use it because the kids, especially in seventh grade, as they're transitioning more towards algebra, they've needed a lot more work when it comes to, you know, just understanding how to do these problems. And, and so using it for additional practice because they haven't mastered the skill. And so it's been very good for that. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Any other, um, anyone else want to share anything that they noticed or wondered or liked? I'm not seeing any come into the chat yet. Um, so hopefully as they start to think about it, there'll be more come in and I'll interrupt and kind of highlight them. Uh, For sure. Did you use skill builders, Carrie? Oh, I loved skill builders. <laughs> I loved skill builders. Yeah. Uh, skill builders are great, especially prior to assessments doing custom problem sets. Um, for that same reason, if there is like a specific skill that I wanted covered or something like that, then I was able to use like skill builders to kind of fill in those gaps um, as like a great kind of practice uh, type situation. Denise was asking, are all the standards covered in skill yeah. builders? 
Yes, they are. That's a great question, Denise. Yes. So let's, is there a specific grade or in general that you want to see or care about? Uh, I teach six through eight. So uh, oh. I'm just, just curious if they're all there. They are all there. And what I do want to say is these are common core standards because I know certain states have like their additional set of standards. So all of the skill builders, uh, we have all of the, the major works for common core standards. So for sixth grade, here are all of those. Same thing for seventh grade, as well as eighth grade. Um, ooh, I commend you, Denise, six through eight. You got to do it all. So shout, shout out to you, ma'am. <laughs> And they're also adding more like we're, you know, some of the standards are a bit more complex. Um, obviously, like there's like different parts to it. And like we're adding more skill builders to kind of get to that nitty gritty um, kind of case study when it can or skill set when it comes to a certain problem. So this actually came up in the chat via like a um, private message. And I think it's a great opportunity to share out this um, person was asking, like, how would you like deal with like a a student who, for example, can correctly like draw the graphical representation. So like they can do the intersecting two lines and things like that when it comes to a graph, but they're not able to take that and turn it into an equation. Right. And so usually that's, yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. So actually what Carrie just said is um like, we're like rolling into like prime example. She kind of teed that up perfect, perfectly. Um, one of our other, um, co-worker she like her whole world is around the content and so uh, one of the things that I actually get the privilege of helping her with is um, that we're able to break down and break apart those skill builders so like right now if we're looking at like you know how we have like the parts a b and c there and and some of those standards will be like represent this in a graph and an equation and then this and then that so one of the things that um having a conversation she was like we need to be intentional about like graph and then the equation as well. And like, so each so each separate part, being able to break it apart so that um, students are able to spend that time specifically around that additional support. And so um, I know that's coming um, and that's something that they're actively working on. Each month, um, there's additional, if you get the newsletter, you'll see like which ones have been updated and have um, like a new round of them that, that's, that has came out. Um, so I, So that way you can be intentional about targeting the specific supports needed for that student that was a really good question <laughs> look at you ready I love when people are like ready for all the things that we're trying to actively be better on any other uh, questions or anything coming through um I am not seeing any at the moment okay all right awesome so um I just wanted to draw your attention to the skill builder report so let me actually show you show it to you in real time. Um, a skill builder report is going to be a little bit different than your like a normal report that you might see. Um, and so on your skill builder report, uh, you'll still see the time it took for the students. But these are the symbols that you'll be able to see um, on a report. If you go to scoring, it breaks down like what do these symbols actually mean? So if you see like that green check mark, that means that that student answered it correctly the first time. Like got it right, moving on. Um, if you see the orange with open circle check mark, that means that they did get it right, but not on that first try. And then, um, and they also didn't ask, like, need any support there. And then also, if you see a, a, a red X, found, it means that they didn't get it correct. And that's okay, because skill builders are getting better at the skill. So this would be like what your report would see, you would see in your report. Um, I think it's also, for me, what I would do in this situation, again, to like how to actually target those uh, additional supports. So if I'm seeing the student here, where on that first time they like they got them all, all wrong, those first three, and then they were able to go through and get like eventually got it right. And then finally we got it right again. In my mind, what I would do is I would uh, reassign that skill builder for like that grade level first and see if that's a common pattern. And if it is, I would do the prereq for it. So again, like love that we are able to go from second grade up to 12th grade. So this is, um, this is a third grade example, but for instance, if this was seven, seven RP one, let's say, and we know like, again, major work for seventh grade, a student is still needing some additional support there. I would reassign it 
uh, for them for a try it again tomorrow, you know, like step away, come back. If I'm still seeing these same things, I will go to look at their prereq. So like the sixth grade prereq for that work to be able to build the skills necessary to develop what they might need to be successful before having them work on that standard in advance. So those are some different ways that you can utilize skill builders, the benefit of being able to, to have, you know, like the grades previous and, uh, and then the grades prior to it as well, um, to be able to really target what students need and how to build um, the, the mastery that students need to be successful within the standard. All right. So want to roll into any like Q and A's. I know we've asked a couple of questionnaires. Are there any other like specific questions or like how to's, what abouts, can we try? What happens if that are coming up? I'll give everyone a few minutes to write in the chat if they want to write in the chat. There is one thing I was wondering if you could show. This was a quick tip that I liked with skill builders in the classroom. Um, you can actually see the individual problem that your students did in that skill builder via the report. It's the same way as you would see in our normal assessments report, but you know, skill builders tend to be random. So student A's first question is different than student B's first question. And so you're able to click onto that student and be able to open up the student level report where you can kind of get the play by play of what they answered. But if you click on the started problem, um, it'll pop up that random problem that they got first in case you're curious, like there's a particular student you just want to know, like what were their problems that they're getting or if they're getting every third one wrong, are they doing that on purpose so they can just get more practice <laughs> or is there something else going on and like whatever that third question is, is like a what the format or something is what's throwing students off and I think that's always a nice touch that um, it's not necessary, but if you're curious on the play-by-play -play for students, you're able to actually see that in the report. Oh, thanks for highlighting that. Go ahead, Gary. Uh, what's the rationale for 10 questions per day? Oh, that's a great question. Gary, do you know the answer to that one? I do. It's okay, actually great. based in a couple of different studies. So before skill builders were rolled out to everybody, uh, they actually did a bunch of studies on it to see kind of like what was the effect of student practice and at what point in time would be like mastery. And it, 10 questions incorrect in a row was kind of like, okay, well, there's no point in making the student continue to get them incorrect in a row. That's really a place for a teacher to step in and to provide that support. And so like getting to the student, we're not the point of like total frustration and shutdown, right? And then also giving the teacher opportunity for intervention. And so they're able to see that quickly in the report because they're seeing like that series of incorrect. Um, and then they can intervene before a student gets to like shut down mode. And then the student has the fresh opportunity the next day to be able to try it again. And that's also how they came up with the three in a row mastery was through that same study. That's a good question. I, was, I actually was like, why is it just 10? But that makes it, I knew about the three, but I was like, hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there any spiraling with skill builders? Like spiraling as, I might need to clarify this, let's get a little bit more clarity. Of, like, <laughs> like, how are you interpreting spiraling in that case? Because I always think of it like, third grade coming up in seventh grade or like fifth grade content coming up in seventh grade again and things like that. Yeah, that's kind of where my mind went. Um, whoever asked the question, can you clarify what you mean by spiraling? That way I can answer your specific question and not what I think you're asking me. Oh, like adding and subtracting fractions and then having problems for multiplying fractions. Ah, okay. Yes. So um, that, you, look at you. That's literally something that we, uh, that um, the breaking apart of a standard is what um, Don, that's who is over our content. Like that's some of the things that are coming through for skill builders. I actually literally just uh, helped her create a couple of that. We broke that apart where it was like, let's do addition and subtraction first and then multiplication and division. So it is broken apart now to where 
I, yeah, it would be a, a spiraling of a set standard. Um, I need to, I can, if there's a specific standard that you're looking for, um, or like a subgroup of standards, if you want to um, either put that in a chat, or if you want to email um, us at like contact at, at assessments.org, then we, I can give you the specific answer of like when this might be coming out, or if this is something that was um, covered already. Thank you for clarifying your question. I think it's great that in our content library, you have all of the like skill builders. You have access to that entire list in that content library that you can like go in and find, okay, I need a one that is just like uh, fifth grade level content that builds on the seventh grade ratio and proportions, right? And so you're able to kind of find that in the fifth grade one, assign it to your seventh grade to kind of build that foundation and then get to like the sixth grade ratio and proportion section and then get to the seventh grade one. So you sort of can like self spiral as well because you have access to everything in that content library and can assign anything that you want from there. Very true. Any other things coming through? Not that I am seeing. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I love good questions. Um, all right. So um, now that we've uh, exposed, maybe exposed you to, or just reiterated skill builders for you, I um, would love to hear if there, if you can see any way that you would actually incorporate skill builders into your existing routines based off of what we talked about today. Oh, great silence. <laughs> um, I already use them, of course, but I haven't tried. I haven't thought about using them for uh, test work, so I'm going to try that this next week to see if that doesn't help the kids better prepare for the tests. Uh, I think that's a good suggestion. I think that's awesome, Rich. I think one of the things I did was before we have a standards report, <laughs> I would have to be like, "Okay, here's my class. What standards like specifically were there?" And I think it kind of touches on the spiral. Um, I had. Um, I was intentional about like my week where we had a day where it was about like recapping um, more where I can, I did station work essentially where I allow students to rotate and then I could pull small groups. And so what I would do in that time is um, knowing where my students were, I would assign like different students, different things um, in order to ensure like, okay, I, this student might need some acceleration within what we're on the standards. This student might need some remediation and then pulling some uh, like, Based, like based off of that standard work, having some like hands-on activities connected to it. So being able to uh, wrote like around testing time, you know, like sometimes they vamp it up like, oh, it's test prep, all the shenanigans, you know, all of that. Um, that was, I, I had that um, practice throughout the entire school year um, so that my students were conditioned to it. But by the time we got there, I started to pay attention to like major works or looking back at like, um, where my, one of my students might have been in the first part of a state, uh, like within a, a, like a map test or things there and what standards might need to be reinforced to rebuild and support them in that process. So that was one of the ways that I utilized it. Uh, Denise is going to try and use it to help her with standards-based grading. So giving the students probably the opportunity to try again at um, a standard from in class. Um, she's not quite sure how yet that she's going to incorporate it exactly in her routine. Okay, that's awesome. I think it's great um, that you might want to utilize it and try it. And it, and it might, it could even be um, where if you like have a certain amount of time that you teach and a certain amount of time that students get additional practice, where it becomes like, uh, after you've like covered something, you can have them like have that skill builder set for them to work on that standard. And then like, you know, maybe pull the class back in and do additional questions or anything in that capacity. Um, I also have known teachers to utilize like as their bell ringer or their do now, like that's been another thing I've seen um, before where teachers use that for that time, for utilizing it for that time when students come in, it's like we, like whatever they taught the day before, okay, let's make sure that it's like, how are, how are students doing with that? Or also as like a precursor to kind of be like, we're about to enter into the standard. What do my students actually know? So those are some of the things that I've seen 
um, and ways that I've seen teachers utilize skill builders. All right. Well, it's time for the wrap up. So just want to, again, today we talked about the standards report and skill builders and how to utilize the uh, skill builders connected to the standards report. Uh, Carrie is going to drop a survey in the chat for you. Definitely love your feedback. Always appreciate it. We, um, we very much take it and say like, hey, how can we make things better? How can we be intentional um, about what's, what teachers might need or want or how they're feeling? So don't hold back. Make sure you fill out that survey. While you're doing that, I just wanted to share a couple different opportunities or things that you might hear about or see that are coming up. Uh, we do have Assistance Advantage, and um, that is uh, some, something I get to be a part of, which I love. Um, but it's really about uh, diving deeper, being intentional about like um, utilizing like data-driven instruction and results. And so if that's something that you're interested in or would like to see brought to your school um, or to the district that you're in, um, then there is more information about that on our website. We also have a Facebook group. Yay! So um, you can either scan this code or Kara's going to also have links in the chat because I'm more of a like send me a link type of thing. If you're not a part of our Facebook group, please um, click on that link and you can be a part of it. We do, uh, we go live and we talk about a couple of different things there. And uh, we also have like different surveys and different um, things where we like reach out and get feedback, but also like promote different stuff that we have going on. So definitely join in. So it's always good to be a part of a community and get more information. And then lastly, we have another webinar coming up next month. It's literally in a month, which is crazy because it's March 15th. Um, and so this one will be talking about uh, intervention um, and then connecting like tutoring into the core structure of the classroom instruction. And um, I think it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to like be a part of that. Some of the things that'll be coming up again, like I know it'll be around testing time. It's just how to be intentional about utilizing um, those things or like the, the tutoring structure or how to reinforce and support students um, within a structure of like in your core classroom or if you have like the pull out groups that you're doing. So don't wanna miss that one. That is next month, same time, same place. And that's what I have for y'all. So you'll be recording those as well, because I know. Oh, yes, we did. we were definitely were recording. Them. So if you can't make it, because I know sometimes it's like depending on what day of the week is crazy going on, uh, all of these will be recorded, and so uh, this will also be recorded. What will happen is we'll record it, and then um, it, you know it takes some time to go up in the cloud and all the things, and then we'll have it to I'll, you'll get a follow up email with the recording as well as the link to uh, the slides as well. So just in case you wanted to like see something else again or needed to refer. Back back to them you'll have those okay well again appreciate y'all being here tonight thank you for leaning in uh participating and giving us your time um if there are no other questions then i hope you have a good rest of your night and a great rest of your week and as you get ready for testing i really hope it goes well um and that you are building the tools that students need to be successful and confident um not just about a test but like in their math knowledge and in their math journey so thank you so much for what you do, first of all, and also for being here. And hope you have a good night.